Hi, this is Yuri. In this video, I will begin to show you a very important concept called function composition. This is one of the concepts that will lead us toward the sequence in Haskell. It is not as easy as we would think at first. Let's start in C. If we have a C program, we can write the A, B, and C function calls like this in a sequence. And the three functions will be called in this order. To test this, I will add the function definitions where I print the name of the code function. If you are interested in how to create macros to automate this process, check my videos about MCEdit macros. Some languages distinguish between functions and procedures which doesn't have any return type and value. Here in C, these concepts are mixed, and of course functions do not have to be pure. This is the version of my C compiler. I will use this sequence of commands to build and run my executable. The output is what we expected. But in Haskell, what we have is function composition. So we always have to think in terms of compositions. Let's try to rewrite this code to express this concept in a clearly usable way in C. To call B after A, first we have to be sure that we could pass a parameter to B. We are able to make it possible by deleting void from here. This is a kind of tricky overloading, but that's good for us now. So the parameter has been accepted. The next step is that we have to produce an output from A. Okay, in a similar way, we could rewrite B. And if we would like to be, let's say, compatible in this way, we have to rewrite C also. Please note that A could have a different signature because it is the first element of the composition. Please remember this when we will learn about monads and the return function in Haskell. Okay, we have something which looks like a sequence, but we need more things to describe it precisely in most circumstances. For example, when a function has multiple parameters. You may know that the parameters of a function are not evaluated in a well-defined order in most languages. It could be true in the case of statements from which a sequence is built. This makes possible some optimization techniques to exist. So we need a kind of tricky restriction here if we only have functions. And this is the associativity with precedence. Remember, plus and multiplication and logical operators are also functions which take arguments and to define an order between them we have these rules in C also. In Haskell we have to have full control over these things to describe a complicated concept like sequence. Let's go to Haskell part. Since in Haskell we only have composition, associativity and precedence, which helps us to define sequence points, and sec to force evaluation, but this is an, another story, the Haskell programmer must think in a very different way than the imperative programmers do. Please remember that sometimes the order of the parameters could be important also. This leads us to the topics of commutativity and monoids. But now I try to show you some aspects of sequence. We are starting from the main program. If you haven't seen my video about the main program in Haskell, please check it. Now I will show you the result of the function called f12, where f is a function which takes two ints and returns an int. And defined as a wrapper around the plus function. Let's run it. Okay, it is free, like the result of an addition.
because we are in Haskell, we could use f in an infix form. Let's add the function and operator with a higher precedence and check the result. 1 plus 2 multiplied by 2 is 6. That's correct. So f is really strong. Interesting. But when we are adding fixity and if we are using the precedence which is the same as in the case of addition, we could get a different result. Now the rep plus function has a precedence that we could saw in the table. So this is the power of precedence. We can go further. It could be surprising. Now we know more or less what infix and precedence mean. Let's go forward with an another aspect, associativity. More precisely, notational associativity. In the next example, you can see the same ideas, but I define both P and M to be left associative. It is important that they have the same precedence. Let's see the result. Three minus two plus one is equals to two. But if we are right associative, three minus two plus one is equals to zero. Yes, it is not easy to read at all. Just to finish this video, I will show you the composition because we started with it. But probably you already know that, so I will add debugging things to it. I do not want to be too boring. Here I define functions which concatenate, append letters to their inputs and contain some debug info which will be especially useful to understand the concepts behind. I think it is good if we are able to use the language itself for debugging. We get two sequences. When I am transforming it, I am using all the concepts we discussed. This is why I said that it is not easy at all. Please play with these concepts separately and try to combine them to train your eyes and your mind. If you wish, we could go deeper in one of my next videos. Thank you for your time. Goodbye.